All right, so the next speaker is Uri Weiser, uh, who he was uh, worked at Intel for many, many years. He's a retired Intel fellow. Uh, he's done a lot of startup companies, and he's also a professor at Technion in Israel. Okay, um, let's start. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, I got this message from a, a yell saying that, you know, I have to talk about something in the future. And I said, okay, let's start to think about something. And, uh, but I have a problem. First of all, I'm one before the last people to talk. So everybody talked about everything. So in a sense, I don't have anything to do. And the main problem, the other problem, you know, I flew 1,100,000 uh, uh, actually kilometers uh, to say, to greet uh, Yel. And uh, I'm talking after Bob, which is a problem always, really. Uh, and, and believe me, you know, I used to talk after him and before him while we were in Intel and we talked together also. So, and we fought together also. Okay, so I have a, a challenge. A, a, a Yale, something about Yale. Um, this is a picture that was taken uh, uh, about a year ago uh, in Haifa. And as you can see, uh, Yale is in the middle always. And <laughs> but, but it's more than that. You know, he's determined to say his words and to push others to do things. Uh, he had been in Israel several times, and in one of the first times that he was in Israel, he was with his girlfriend, and he was supposed to go to Egypt. And he decided that he would like to take the bus. And uh, she said, no, we're going to fly. He said, no, you know, Moses went one way, we'll go the other way, you know, from Israel with a bus to Egypt. And he said to me, you know, I had to ask her 13 times until she got it right. <laughs> <laughs> this is Yale. Okay. A, 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 one picture about my motto, and some of you probably saw it several times even, you know, about sailing boats. And, and the main question in sailing boat, you know, what do you do if you are the first boat and what you do if you are the second boat? And it's a model that I'm keeping saying, and just today I met somebody who said, yes, you know, about 10 years ago, I heard it from you, and I still remember. And there is a strategy for the first boat, and there is a strategy for the second boat. The second boat strategy is not to follow the first one, never. You can follow part of the way, but at least once you shouldn't follow the first one. And if you look at the first one, the first, the, the, the uh, strategy of the first boat is to look backwards at number two and to follow number two. This way you'll stay on, always number one. Think about Intel. So in general, the motto that I'm using is do not follow, invent. Okay, so, so let, let's go to, to, to other stuff. So uh, a lot of people talking about big data and uh, of course we got into it too. And, and I'll try to show you something that, you know, some stuff that we did in the past, I'll just remind it, and, and then uh, we'll talk about uh, the last part, which is more related to data movement. And everybody was talking here about uh, data movement, when May and Bill and, and others. So, uh, so we'll talk about a, a, a big data, which actually the main thing that you have to do in big data is reduce uh, 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 energy per task because it's huge data and you have to compute a lot. And compute a lot will cost you a lot in energy and you have to reduce the energy. So at least uh, I'll talk about two main things in, in energy. One is the uh, opportunity in, in energy uh, or power and energy 
which is the heterogeneous system, and the other one is the efficient computation, which is reduction in data movement. So the first one, or first of all, let's talk about the big data. And big data, you know, call for multiple computer engine that are taking care of, of one big task, right? We all know about Hadoop and Spark. And, and, and computer centers uh, uh, um, was shifted actually, the, like, like Bob was talking about, in our days we were talking about performance. Today everybody is talking about energy saving, as we all know. And, and we need a lot, huge amount of processing, and definitely it'll cost us energy. So let's go now to the uh, two options that uh, I'm talking about. One is the heterogeneous system, and probably some of you saw this is past work that we did, and the resource allocation, uh, uh, or efficient resource allocation. So what we are talking about, we are talking about a, a accelerator that actually from the performance to PowerPoint of view, definitely you are getting pretty good results, uh, but you have to pay in the application range. So you know the application range and you get a better, much better performance power. And the question is if actually the, the graph looks like that, not like this, but looks like that. You have the performance uh, per power, you have the application, but you have also the performance axis. And if you go, if you want to increase the performance, definitely we will go down in the performance power for specific application. And if you go there, the question is, where on this graph should I work if I have several accelerators uh, in the same time? And this work that we've done in the past, and we are talking about, you know, what happened if we have several accelerators that are is in, in working in a serial mode, and we found out a very nice uh, equation that actually we call it multi amdal that definitely the, the 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 time that took you to run this portion of the code time the derivation of this accelerator based on power in this case you know should be equal for each one of the accelerators so it's very interesting and you can get very nice ideas and actually by that you can get a, a, a very balanced system and optimized system. So let's let, let, let's go now to the efficient computation, which is the, the, the second part, which is you know more important uh, 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 when you talk about big data. So first of all, uh, 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 avoid avoid the valley, right? And the question is, uh, I'll show you some work that we did in the past, but now we look at it from a different point of view. We look at it from the performance per power point of view. So we all uh, uh, know that you know when we use, if you look here at the performance graph versus number of threads, when you have multiple uh, cores running behind one big uh, cache, uh, if you use the, the cache not in, in a very efficient way, in very if if the application are very demanding on the memory, uh, you can reach a point that actually what you get, you get a degradation in performance. You'll get it back when you go and uh, use quite a lot of threads like NVIDIA is doing. And at the end of the game, you know, you'll get back the performance, but there is this valley that you have to be aware of. <coughs> but if we look at, uh, 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 if you look at, at this valley <coughs> and you add a, a, you increase the, the cache size, you see that the graphs are, 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 are changing and, and going, in this case, up the performance. But if you look at the energy, the performance per power, you know, you have to be very careful. The minute the misses on the, on the cache is going up, and this is the place in this place, then suddenly the performance per power is going down dramatically and you should avoid this area, which is this the area where the uh, system is not efficient at all. Okay, so now let's let's go to 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 big data, and this is more the stuff that is 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 newer. And and the 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 main message, at least that I see in in big data, is this one. 
you have a lot, a lot of data that you process. At the end of the game, you get not a lot of data at all. So there's a huge amount of data, and we call it funnel, a huge amount of data that you are using, and at the end of the game, you get almost nothing. And the question is, can you use this concept in order to save energy in one way or the other? So we have an idea, you know, it's, 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 it's a really new idea, uh, and we're working on it. So we don't have final numbers on that. So if you look at, at, at the structure of, of, of big data with machine learning, you have, uh, first of all, the first stage, which is data structuring. Right? And this is the, the, the level of aggregation. You take a lot of data. I'm taking the data of each one of you, and I would like only to take the data or to evaluate the data of watching TV, for example. So first of all, I'm taking all the data that exists and just extract the information that I need in order to evaluate later on the machine learning uh, 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 element. So this is the element that actually the, the uh, ratio between data in and data out is 10 to the power of six more, you know, it's, it's just amazing, right? Because I'm looking at a lot of data and I'm extracting all the information that really I need. Later, you know, I'll use some kind of machine learning uh, uh, um, uh, processing that here inside this machine learning processing, you have also these funnels that exist inside, but this one is the biggest one. And then at the end of the game, you have the, the model usage after you, you build your, your model, the model usage at the client level, you, you go and use. So if looking at that, we said, wait a minute. We agree that the structuring is being done, you know, not very frequently, even if it's done, you know, once a year, but the amount of information here is huge, is huge. And then we said, let's try to work on that. You know, our estimation that just building this uh, uh, structure or data structuring uh, probably takes more than half of the energy of these two together. Even that the structuring is being done, you know, not very frequently, while the model creation is, can be done every day. By the way, if it's every day or every year, the factor is one to 100, right? Or one to 300. So, and then we said, okay, if this is true, let's go and look at, the, at this structuring, data structuring, and let's see what, what we can do. Now, th this foil looked uh, almost uh, equal to the uh, foil that when May just presented uh, a couple of stock ago, in which actually you go from the NIC or from the SSD, you go all the way to memory. In this case, we didn't want to show a NUMA structure because it's easier to explain. And we said you, you go here actually to memory, you bring it to DMA, you then copy from kernel to user mode, then the CPU will take it in, We'll do some calculation, write it back, right? If you need something else, it'll, something else will be done. And then you just take from the memory, from user to kernel, and then you'll drive all the way out. Now, in this case of huge amount of uh, big data, I'm writing DMA into my memory, taking a lot, a lot of, of the memory itself, right? Remember that by the number that uh, Bill and, and Stanford guys said, you know, it takes, uh, you know, a couple of nanojoule per byte to write and to read from a uh, DRAM memory. So in a sense, there's a lot of energy that being used here. Now, but what we are saying is that most of this data that we are looking here is data that's read once. In a sense, when I'm taking all the database of all the people around here, I'll read once each one 
of the data and then make decision about extracting part of it or not. So in a sense, what I'm doing, I'm reading once most of the data. Now, if you look, in a sense, when we are looking at cache, we all know about reuse distance. The reuse distance of a cache is uh, something at around mega, one mega accesses. You know, after several mega of accesses, the probability, the temporal locality will be there is almost zero. So the minute the reuse distance is huge, you know, it doesn't make sense to use cache at all. But if we go now and look at memory, the same thing apply for memory. Memory is a cache, right, on a page basis. So now if the re reuse distance is one, is more than one giga accesses, or several giga accesses, the data won't exist in the memory when I want to reach it again. Okay, and definitely in the cases that I do read once. So the minute the reuse distance is several or giga accesses, it's the same as, re as, as read once, that I have it only once, reading only once. For reading once, doesn't make sense to take the data, bring it to memory, then the CPU will have to compare it with something and just leave it, or if it's the right one, it'll go and save it something somewhere in the memory. And then we say, why shall we go all the way there? And this is not including what may, may, when may uh, show. So in this case, we said, you know, why to use, to use, uh, uh, use one's data should move all the way to the big core. And the second is why do I have to leave trace in memory? It doesn't make sense at all. So what we are doing, or what we propose to do here, is to go and to have at the front end, in the I.O. bridge, near the NIC, near the SSD, right, or near the disk, to put a processor, we just call it FFP, but, but, or FPP, but the basic idea is to have a processor there with a memory on die, that actually will get, or cache if you want, or FIFO, will get the data, will evaluate it, right? The data that it's needed for further evaluation, it will write to memory, and all the rest will, will ignore. In this case, first of all, this processor, right, can be a small one, right? I don't need a big one. By the way, there can be several of those because by definition, this aggregation element is being done in parallel. So I'll have something which is very small here. We'll have some kind of a buffer, a FIFO. So all the data that we are talking about, it used to travel all the way to memory and then to the CPU, and then the CPU just ignore it. You know, let's go and do it before you write to the DRAM. And by that, we are saving the nano gel per byte the writing and reading from the memory. Even more if you look at the, about, uh, if you talk about big data. In the big data, what Hadoop is doing is looking what kind of memory you have, what is the size of memory, and decide to cut the data, the huge data that exists, uh, into the size, to the sizes of your memory, and then divide it between uh, between servers. In this case, when my memory is not being used by the huge amount of data, you know, I have more memory available. So the, actually Hadoop won't cut it to small pieces, but can cut it to much larger pieces. So this is the huge amount of memory saving that I'll have, right? Uh, as we said before, you know, those can be very small engines. Uh, and you know, and, and save read or write on 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 the DRAM energy. So that's that's a you know an easy part when you, when you start, but then the problem uh, uh, appears. There's a lot of problem but because of that. This is a wonderful ground for for the academia to work on. The first of all is the software and the OS. Uh, one thing I have to admit, um, I used to work at Intel uh, for many years. And for many years, I was, you know, following Intel steps in the horizontal market. 
everything has to be uh, compatible, backward compatible, and and took me, I think, uh, more than five years to think about the vertical market. And in, in many cases, you know, the cell phones and, and, and the graphics element and so on, are in a sense, almost a vertical market by, by in, in their environment. And if you talk about the server uh, uh, companies that are building server from top to bottom, right, for big data, they are real vertical market. They can write the application, they can write the OS, and they can build the machine. And if this is the case, then the software and the OS, you know, can be changed in such a way actually to support the idea that you have, quote unquote, a core processor at the front that is taking care of it. And definitely the main problem is the memory subsystem. How do you solve it? By a core processor, by heterogeneous system. You know, compatibility is a big issue and you have, uh, you don't have to solve it if you are in a vertical market. And application definitely have to be aware of this new structure, but we believe that we'll be able to, ser to save quite a lot of energy doing this one. And last foil, uh, the final function uh, 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 should be execution unit, which is uh, very, very close to the source of the data, if it's a NIC or if it's a, a, a SSD. Uh, free up quite a lot of uh, system memory, uh, reduction data movement, which is the most important thing. Uh, simple ever energy efficient engine instead of the big CPUs that exist today in our general purpose. And the issues are, as we said before, compatibility, application, OS, and, and, and you know, we have still to work and understand, you know, what is the amount of energy that potentially will be saved you know, depends on the application, the system that will be built. Thank you.